What level of excited are you right now? I am so excited. I can't even stand it. I have been wanting one of these cars since I was 15 years old. After giving the car a good once over, we knew we had to have it. We paid the lady and loaded up. so cool i feel like i'm going to i feel like i'm going to le mans right now <laughs> hardcastle mccormick it's it's that style it's it's not the exact car but it's a it's actually even better in my opinion A year later, we decided to wipe the dust off our 917 and get it back on the road once again, with the help of our good Volkswagen buddy, Jeff. I'm trying to break the engine loose and get the rust off the cylinders to see if we can get these, some compression back in this motor. Your percentage chances of us getting this actually 25% running. today. At this point, <laughs> at this point. At this point, it was locked up. So I wonder what the oil is going to look like. <laughs> Barrier doesn't matter. It's probably not running like this. This is just sitting like this, I swear. It wasn't like this. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's just sitting there. Yeah, it's just sitting there. Yeah, it's just sitting there. So it was sitting outside, open like that. For how many years? God only knows. Estimated. That is disgusting. You're missing the battery bracket. Like right here. Yep. If you look at the wires, they go right there. That poor engine. After seeing that uh, oil drain there, what do you put our percentage of getting this engine actually fired up today at now? Getting lower by the minute. I would give you $5 if you did that. Five? Upon further inspection, we came across lots of gunk and buildup in the bottom of the engine. So Caroline just went to the parts store to get us some oil and a filter for the 917. And Jeff and I just continued working on the engine. And as you can see here, we just took the oil filter screen out and that is some, some not sick, some so, stuff. yeah, not so yummy, yummy stuff. We got Hershey's Serpent here now. Magnesium and aluminum breakdown. So, oh, oh my God. Yeah. And that's why you don't start a used motor without cleaning it. Oh, can you imagine? We would have blown this thing out. I mean, it's if probably still going to blow up. If we'd have done it rot wheels way, rot wheels, yeah. this would have definitely been blown out. This is rot wheels. This is okay. on every single car <laughs> that we mess with. The signature thing is dirt dust. Dirt dust. Right. That's made from dog feces. <laughs> So we are working on our beautiful 917. Jeff has so kindly uh, helped me take the valve covers off, uh, drain the oil. Well, what oil was left is mostly water. We have made transmission fluid, ATF, and parts cleaner mixture. We're going to take this cool little pressurizer here and give this motor an enema. We gave it our all in hopes of saving this neglected motor.
power now. Percentage-wise, now. The amount of shit that just shot out. 95, here. 95. We're at 95. Come on, baby. Even though we were able to get the engine to run, it wouldn't idle on top of all the other problems it had. It was time to pull the motor. I'm working on the 917 laser, and I've got it on the lift. And what I am going to be doing is pulling the engine out. But before I do that, I'm going to take this lower balance uh, off the back. A lot of the guys, a lot of the pictures I've seen of these cars, they don't even have this on. Um, it basically, I'm taking out the rivets. It's just riveted in. Like, the whole car, this whole uh, fiberglass piece on the back is just riveted on. So, I'm just drilling the rivets. They're coming out. I've already done the other side. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one off and get Caroline to come in and actually help me hold this thing up into place while I drill a couple of the last rivets out and then this, we'll be able to drop this thing right off the car. James's first VW engine pull. I've got all the bolts that Jeff and Caroline told me to pull out. I've disconnected the throttle cable I have disconnected all the wires and marked them properly. So I know exactly where to put them back whenever I go to put this engine back in. Let's see if it comes out as easy as they say they do. I'm balancing it, slide it out. I would have to say it's pretty easy. Once the engine was out, we wasted no time tearing it down. So should we take it outside and uh, gunk it up and pressure wash the crap out of it? No, we're probably gonna end up having to break this thing apart and clean it all up before we can, uh, after we get it running. That's not the rot wheels way, bro. You think? Full of turpentine, right? Yes, it smells glorious. Ah! <laughs> this could be the reason why I just did not want to run. Nasty. What? Extremely nasty. That's dude. Looks like 15 years of crud. Good, bud. That thing is clean. The rot wheel standards. So that's an oil cooler. And how about the... <laughs> how about the accessories? <laughs> Dude. That is ridiculous. Now you got a nice pen and pencil holder. It's all the way down inside the head. That would have caused a little bit of a cooling issue. Yes. There should be no oil trace anywhere along in here. There's washers between the cooler and the adapter. These are supposed to be on the end of the nuts. We didn't find any washers on the nuts. So when the cooler was mirrored up with the adapter, this, the oil cooler seals could not be fully seated in here because there was washers in between holding the oil coolers off from being sealed. Just reassembled our carburetor, but it's not working properly. And it's gonna have to have a rebuild kit, possibly have, just have to be completely replaced. At least we can check and see if we have oil pressure and we can see if we actually have uh, fixed our leak on the oil cooler. So we let it sit here with some fuel in it. We did take the, tap, the, the cap off of the, or the top of the carburetor off and there was fuel in the bowl, so we're like, what's going on here? I pumped it again with the throttle, 
and it started pumping. So I, I think it fixed itself. I don't know. I mean, Jeff seems to say no. I seem to say maybe because that's the rot wheel way. So let's just see what happens here, Jeff. Maestro, let's hear some music. After we devised a plan for the engine, it was on to the leaky transaxle. I smell rat piss. Yeah, how do you like that? Dude, that's awesome. This is factory 917 right there, baby. I'm cutting the parking brake cables. How are you doing that? with some bolt cutters. And why are you using bolt cutters? Because that's the only thing I have that will cut through and I don't want to get a whiz wheel. Fresh paint, new axle boots and seals. Man, she shined up good. Dude, new boots. Nice going, Jeff. I just took a rot and a rot wheel. Installing the heavy duty motor mount and drive seal were a few of the finishing touches we had before installing the transaxle. Anybody other than James? I didn't have to do the strap on mine because I didn't get the strap with the kit. I just got the mount. She wasn't planning on sending it like Jane plans on sending it. When mounting the transaxle to the new mount, we realized the flywheel was not going to clear the nuts. So a little clearancing fixed that problem in no time. So today's activities was to install transmission, install some rear brakes, and eventually get to the front brakes. Obviously we've gotten the transmission installed, all the axles, a majority of the brakes in the rear, transmission mounts. We prepped longer studs for the camber compensator to keep the rear wheels from tucking when James decides to get on it. And we're about ready to put some shots in. top of the world about to jump above it take it straight to the moon because we know how to rock it Ain't no well the main line coming off the master cylinder is actually frozen the uh the fitting is frozen on the line that's not bad it's the line yeah it's, it's kind of explaining that the emotion the problem that we're having here is is the nut is not seized to the master cylinder the nut the flared nut is seized to the brake line so now the demise is Death to the main line. Yeah, I like to talk too much, so that's why they don't put me on camera too often. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> It 
it is another awesome day working on the 917. It is right around 8 a.m. here. And today is kind of one of those days where we're just gonna kind of play the catch up game and wrap up a bunch of little things. Like the front wheel cylinders we think are the wrong size because the drums are the wrong size. So we're gonna update those. Probably do a little bit of finishing work in the back. A little tightening up things and torquing everything and getting everything correct. Then we have a decent amount of engine work to do today. We have decided to completely repowder coat this color to match the shocks we got. So in the meantime, we're just gonna do like the clutch kit, the Hoover bit in the back for the oil cooler. Today's gonna be a full day and I'm excited because that means we are one step closer to getting this baby on the road. Right now, usually you can get these to shift back and forth. And right now, I can't get them to move at all. <laughs> Normally they'll just go, but that one's not. Once the brakes were rebuilt and tested, it was time to finish the motor assembly. We got all that out of the motor. Nope, clearly not. Oh, Jeff, I might throw up. This is really gross. It's just like all, all of this boogery, thick, gelatinous. And just like that, we were on to the final test and tune. Since we had endless issues with the other carburetor, we decided to splurge on some nice new dual Weber carbs. Oil's changed, valves are adjusted, and the carburetors are test and tuned. Now it's ready to go into our early 70s Porsche 917. I'm really stoked. I remember pull pulling this motor by myself. It's gonna look like, hey, is it gonna look like the hard cast on the machine? Yes. Remember when that thing would go around corners and it would just be like, I got bouncing like crazy? You, you could plow a tire with this thing. Awesome. We're dry. We're not leaking any gas. We're not leaking any oil. We're not leaking any trans fluid. No gear oil. Dude, it's cool. Thanks for watching this episode of Rot Wheels. We had so much fun putting together this 917, and let's just say it has been one bumpy ride.
I'll agree with that. I can't get out of this thing. I'm gonna peel you out. Yeah. Hey, get going and get wrenching. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> Hot, 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 hot. Oh.